In this video, I'm going to show you my process for creating the graphics for my games. We'll cover step by step how to create the backdrop and the racing cars for this cool racing game. We'll be using an iPad app called Graphic to draw and manipulate the images. There is a desktop version for this app, but it's more expensive and I personally find the iPad app much easier to use. So to transfer the files between my iPad and my desktop, I will be using Dropbox and I will show you how to do that as well. So there's a lot to cover, but I think this will be somewhat eye-opening for a lot of you because it will give you a glimpse into some pretty powerful stuff. So let's get started. Before we start, if you'd like to work with me, you will need a Dropbox account. And if you're not familiar with Dropbox, it is a file hosting service and it allows you to store your files and have access to them from anywhere on any device. So if you don't already have a Dropbox account, I highly recommend getting one at www.dropbox.com. It's free and it's very useful. I use it all the time. Now, once you have a Dropbox account, you can download the Dropbox desktop app from their homepage. And what that does is it creates a folder on your computer that works just like any other folder with one big difference. Any changes you make to your files will automatically sync with your Dropbox account online and across your devices. So that's what I use to transfer files across my devices. I just open up my file manager, which on the Mac is the Finder app. And if you're on a PC, that would be Windows Explorer. And as you can see, I have my Dropbox folder right over here. And if I want to transfer files to my iPad, I just drag them into my Dropbox and then open up my Dropbox app on the iPad and access the files from there. So again, you will need three things, a Dropbox account, the Dropbox desktop app, which you can download from the Dropbox homepage, and the Dropbox iPad app, which you can download from the App Store. Okay, now that we have a way to transfer the files, let's find a road texture image. I'm going to go to one of my absolute favorite sites, www.pixabay.com. And the reason I love this site so much is because you can get both quality free images on it and free vectors. And I'm going to show you what I mean by free vectors in just a little bit. But for now, let's search for a road texture. So I'm going to scroll down and I like this one. So I'm going to click on it, click on free download and I'm going to download a medium size. Now this downloaded to my downloads folder, but since I will need to use it on my iPad app, I'm going to drag it over to my Dropbox folder and access it from the Dropbox on my iPad. Okay, so I'm going to open up Dropbox on my iPad and here is my image. I'm going to click up here to download and select save image. And now this image is saved in my photos on my iPad and I can access it from my graphic app. So let's open up graphic and click on the plus sign on the top left corner to create a new document. You have all these different choices for your canvas, but I usually just go with blank. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set the size of our image. We're going to go up here to settings and set the dimensions. Now we know our stage is 480 by 360, but remember it is possible to enlarge the game and play it in full screen. So I'm going to make this image 1200 pixels by 900 pixels, and this way it will look good when we view it small, but also when we view it large. Okay, the next thing I want to do is set the background. I'm going to click on background image, select change image, and select the image for my photos. Now let's zoom out by pinching our fingers together so we can see the whole canvas. Okay, next we're going to draw our track. And for that, I'm first going to select my oval tool and draw an oval. Then I'm going to go up here and click on the small eye and I'm going to enter 100 for the stroke. Now I'm going to click over here on the fill color and drag this all the way to zero so that my fill is transparent. Okay, we could leave our track just looking like an oval, but let's make it just a bit more interesting. 
I'm going to select the path selection tool right over here and using this tool I will be able to reshape my oval. Now keep in mind when I first learned how to use graphic I found this particular tool to be the hardest to use so try not to get frustrated. It is a very powerful tool but it does take some practice. Let's click over here on the left dot and drag it down just a bit. Now if your track gets out of the canvas just click on the center dot and drag it down. Now let's do the same with this dot right over here. We're not going to change it too much, just a bit, so you can get the idea. Okay, next we're going to draw the broken divider line. While our track is selected, we can go up here and click on the paper clip and select copy and then paste. We now have two tracks, so let's get the select tool and drag one down. Let's change the thickness of the stroke, so again, click on the small i and this time let's set the stroke to five. We want our broken line to be white. And finally, let's actually make it into a broken line. So click here on dash and select a broken line. We're going to drag it back to the center in just a second, but first we have a few things to change on our track. Let's make it 50% transparent, and that will give it a somewhat cooler and hopefully more realistic look. And the last thing we're going to do is make the edge of the track. And the reason we need to do that is because in the game, we don't want to let the cars get off the track. And actually what we want to do is bring them back to the start line when they get off. So the way this works in Scratch is you set the edge to a particular unique color and then tell the computer that when the cars touch this particular color, that means they got off the track. So here is how we're going to do this. With my track selected, I'm going to click up here on the middle button and then select Path and Outline Stroke. Now you can't see the difference just yet, but that's because my line color is transparent. So slide that over to 100% and we still can't see it because our stroke is set to zero. So let's click on the eye to change the thickness of our stroke and I'm going to change it to five. Now remember my line color is very important. So let's first select the color and then we need to save it so we know what color to tell the computer to watch out for. Now I'm going to drag the broken line back to the center and then click on the back button and save. And we're going to need to upload our drawing to the Dropbox so we can use it back on the computer but remember before that I need a way to save that color. Now technically I have that color in my image because it is the edge of the track but unfortunately because it is so thin it will be hard for the computer to detect that exact color. So what we're going to do is create another backdrop and set its background color to the color we just saved. So let's click here on the plus and select blink again and click to open it. Now we're going to click here on settings and since we're only using this backdrop in the back end, meaning we will never actually display it in the game, we can use the default size of the stage which is 480 by 360. Now select the background color and since we saved our color we just need to select it. Again we click back and save. Let's change the names of our documents so we can identify them when we find them in the Dropbox. I'm going to call this one track and this one color of edge. Now let's click on the upload button right over here and select save to Dropbox. Select both your documents and click share. Now it's important you save your documents as PNGs. Click save and save again and let's go find them on our computer. Okay, now on the computer, let's open up Scratch and create a new game. Now I'm going to click down here to upload a new backdrop, navigate to my Dropbox folder and find my track image. Then I'm going to repeat that for the color of the edge, select the upload button and find my image. Now just in case you're curious, here is how you get the color. Let's just say I want to put it on the script behind my cut. I'm going to go to Sensing, 
grab this touching color block, click inside the square, and as you can see, it's flashing. Then click on the color, and now it's set. Now all I need to do is change the backdrop back to my basic one, so let's click on the stage, and click on backdrops, and click on the track. Okay, next we're going to create the car sprites. The process is going to be similar. Just like we did before, we're going to find the images on Pixabay, but this time we're going to save them as vector images, and I will show you how we can actually manipulate the drawings, which is pretty cool. Let's go to Pixabay again, so www.pixabay.com, and I'm going to type racing car in the search box, but this time I'm going to select vector graphics. Scroll down, and this is the one I want. Let's click on free download, but this time select SVG. You will need a Pixabay account to download an SVG, but it's free. And since I use this site all the time, I highly recommend it. Now again, this is saved to my downloads folder, so I'm going to drag it over to my Dropbox and then go access it from my iPad. Okay, let's open up our Dropbox app again. We want this to stay a vector image, so when we export it from Dropbox, we're going to choose Open In and then choose Copy to Graphic. Now let's open up this new document. As you can see, this is not just an image. I actually have free access to somebody else's drawing, and I can modify it as I wish, which I think is pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is keep one car green and change the color of the other car to blue. So let's get out for a second and duplicate this. And let's go back in and change this one to blue. Now let's make the background color transparent on both of these. Rename the documents. and save them both as PNGs to the Dropbox. Now back on Scratch, let's create a sprite by uploading an image. Go to the Dropbox and select blue car and then repeat for the green car. And that's my process for creating graphics. I hope you learned something new. I think creating your own games is absolutely wonderful and being able to do it with quality images that fit perfectly is even cooler. So go create some graphics and have fun. Bye.